I'm Simon Robinson with ISIS TV here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. And for chemists used to pushing the boundaries of the materials they develop to the limits, working with NASA on things like spacesuits can give them opportunities to explore whole new worlds. NASA works with a number of organizations like the Houston Bay Area Economic Partnership to find new materials to help with future space programs. We're on the verge of starting our next phase of exploration, which is to planetary surfaces. And of course, in, in regard to that, it's a totally different environment than what we've been experiencing over the past generation, where we've been more or less locked in low Earth orbit. So in regard to uh, planetary exploration, we're going to be encountering a lot of new environments that have some really harsh conditions, uh, temperature-wise, radiation-wise. We've got dust problems to contend with. So we're going to be investigating new materials to give us the, uh, the robustness and the longevity that we'll need for our suits to do the, uh, the human presence and permanent human presence in space. Well, since the astronauts are going to be in space longer, because the missions that are scheduled are going to be uh, much longer flights, especially going back to the moon and possibly going beyond to Mars, the, uh, the suits are going to have to have additional materials and additional protective materials to keep the astronauts healthier longer. Uh, and that's, that could be a real problem because a lot of the suits that we have now, as well as from the Apollo mission, were designed for very short durations of time. And it's a learning process with a lot of these materials that are manufactured. We, we figured out very early that a lot of the suits uh, didn't quite block as much radiation as possible or as necessary. So getting sick in outer space is usually not very fun. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't speak from experience, but getting sick in outer space is not very fun. So Anything that the suits can have to enable them to remain light and yet uh, highly protective is very desirable. To go back to the moon and stay and then use that as a test bed to go to Mars, we certainly need to start looking at materials that are going to give us this longevity that we've discussed regarding the, the robustness and the wearability of materials and also their protective qualities for radiation protection, for dust mitigation aspects. Uh, so I think, you know, we're going to try to see first off what's available, what can be used, and then from there maybe start looking at what needs to be developed in a technology sense to enhance those uh, materials capabilities. Well, the chemical companies play a vital role in creating the, uh, the protective barriers uh, and creating the protective materials for the suits and for things that go on inside of the suits that will help to keep the astronauts healthy and, and in reasonably good shape. Uh, since they're going to be in outer space a lot longer, uh, they're going to have to have additional materials that are already being developed and utilized here on Earth. But adjusting those molecules for spaceflight uh, will require some additional work and uh, collaboration between the Johnson Space Center and the chemical companies. Well, you know, the goal to get back to the moon uh, is probably 2020 right now. And so we really need to start thinking about it. In fact, we're starting to think about it now to develop the requirements that we need to put in for the specification for the suit that we're going to be developing. So between now and probably, uh, I guess, 2012, we'll be looking at requirements definition. And then, of course, between 2012 and 2020, uh, we'll start actually doing some really hard-nosed development work. The size of the companies that we're dealing with could be the larger multinationals to the smaller mom-and-pop operations. And the advantage of the smaller companies is that they have the ability to quickly make modifications to their molecules or to their compounds and get them right to market. Because a lot of the stuff that's being manufactured now is great for here on Earth. Uh, but utilizing it outside of the Earth's atmosphere, molecules tend to do very funny things. And that's where a lot of the R&D that smaller companies can provide, because they can move so much faster, uh, that would greatly benefit the space program. So for chemical companies, working with NASA can lead to exciting opportunities to develop new materials that could lead to a giant leap for mankind.